Delighted to be joined by Bally Giblin hurler Mark Keane, ahead of one of the hashtag toughest showdowns of the year, which sees Bally Giblin face off against Moon Coin of Kilkenny in the AIB GEA Hurling All Ireland Junior Club Championship final this Saturday, February 5th at 3 pm. The game is going to be streamed live online on Sports CG Cahar's YouTube, while tickets are also available on the GEA's website. This year's AIB Club Championships celebrate hashtag the toughest players in Gaelic games, those who, despite adversity, don't quit, who persevere no matter how tough it gets, because tough can't quit. Mark, thank you so much for joining us. No worries. Thanks for having me. I've been having a look through the Bally Gibbon uh, Twitter feed and Facebook pages and all that kind of stuff over the last uh, day or so, and it's just it's a sight to behold. And even the Moon Coin ones as well, seeing the bunting going up around uh, the area and seeing the school kids getting involved as well, and everybody's um, getting basically essentially psyched up for this thing on, on Sunday afternoon. I'd imagine the buzz down there is absolutely incredible right now. Yeah, it's absolutely unbelievable seeing all the shops. Um, with red and white flags out, everyone wearing red and white hats, uh, jackets, everything. Even I'm inside coaching inside the schools here in Mitchestown and the schools are gone mad. Uh, there's no there's no work being done in the schools. Uh, everyone just wearing belly gibbling um clothes every day and it's unreal. They're all excited for the all the kids and even for the older generation in the parishes and they're really excited as well. So it's um it's a huge credit to him as well. Yeah, it's, you're just outside of Mitchellstown there. How big of a, a, a parish will Gally, Bally Giblin be? Uh, oh, it'd, be, it'd be very small. There's no there's no shop or pub or anything. It's just a uh, pitch, school and a church. And that's all that's there. So, um, yeah, not, not very big at all. Yeah. It's, so the achievement to get up to Crow Park and play in an All-Ireland Junior Club final is absolutely yeah, immense. Yeah, no, 100%. Like, I, was just, I was actually just reading the paper there a minute ago and the first, the first junior A North Cork uh, title we won was in 2004. So that was only North Cork. So imagine since then we've won uh, two North Corks um, in the last two North Corks, a county in Munster, and we're hoping to win all Ireland the weekend in the space of two years. But the first time we won it was in 2004. So that was a long time ago, and that's all we've won. We won junior B back in. I'm not too sure what year it was, but. Um, yeah, we haven't won a whole pile as a club, so it's all kind of new to us. Apart from uh, a player called Mark Keane, what do you put the the uptick in form down to? Uh, we, we just uh, deprive ourselves on heart and determination and to work for each other. Um, doesn't no one's in it for themselves; it's all in for the team. And uh, it's even start off with like Liam Dock and Brian Wall and Warren Dwayne and. And Dave Moore, we um, they're a great bunch of lads, and uh, you you just want to go out and win from them and make them happy, and that's well, that, that's how I feel anyway. Just go out and make sure it's through for them. Is there a goal at the start of the year when you're when you're playing uh, club hurling and, and, and playing junior club with with someone like Buddy Gibbon? Like, is there a what well, we got to go and do as best we can in North Cork? We got to go and see if we can make a county final. But what when you're starting off the year, if there is any goal, was the goal this year? Uh, a goal for us really was this year. We I know we had about six or seven lads that didn't play hurling this year because um, they were concentrating on football. Um, that was kind of a big blow to us, but um, we just kept kept going and we 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 just said we'd compete in North Cork and see how we get on and go do our best and try to get to the final. And um, we did. We got to the final after every game we played in the quarter final, semi final, and final. We just got better in each game and. Uh, and that's when we realised that, um, that we might have a chance of uh, more silverware here, this, here, there, this year, and the journey's still going, and hopefully it finishes Saturday on a high. Absolutely. What's the you know, when when kind of Crow Park rears into view for the team? Have Have you personally played there before? Have, have many of the others managed to get up there and, and be on the field itself? Uh, no, personally, I haven't played in Crow Park yet, so it's uh, it's all new to me, and I, I can't wait to get out there and play and. Uh, that run around, but uh, yeah, Colin English has played there for Tipperary before, and uh, Sean Sullivan has played there for Cork Minor Footballers as well before. It's a different prospect going out in that pitch, though, isn't it? I mean, we constantly hear how you know it's it's supposedly bigger, but essentially it's just the space in terms of the stadium is bigger. But have they given an insight to the rest of the team about what it's like to play on that field? No, I suppose we just treat it as if any other game, but they were saying it's, it's definitely a big pitch, and hopefully that'll suit us down to the ground and we'll. We'll, we'll use the width and length of the pitch to our best of our ability and try to uh, crack down Moonkind, which are a very strong team. Mm, I mean, Kilkenny sides are, are, are no joke, typically. No, no, not at all, <laughs> not at all. I know, it's, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant for the parish and it's brilliant for yourselves and, and you personally, I guess, too, because like you've been away from Hurling for, for so long. I don't think you'd picked up a Hurling like three years before you came back and started playing uh, for the club, yeah. have you? 
Yeah, no, I, I hadn't played hurling for the club in uh, three years until until October just gone. So 2021, just October, and I hadn't played since uh, August 2018, something like that. So um, oh, I'm just delighted to be back playing hurling and uh, back playing with my friends and that I grew up with. Who did, was there a dig in the ribs to come and play for for Bally Gilblin, or was there somebody who said, oh, "Do you want to come down and get involved in the training session while you're home?" or or what was the the thought process along there? Uh, I, I was always involved in Bally Gilblin even when I was at home or in Australia. When I was in Australia, I was always uh, in touch with them. Um, like we we had we won the fail under fourteen, we won minors, um, we won, yeah. So we've won a good bit underage, growing up, and then just. I won the North Cork in 2018 just before I left so I'd always kept on track and always followed the boys no matter how, how they're going so uh, yeah just when they came back I, I, I went to them straight away because I was meant to get back playing Hurland so uh, I'm glad I did because um working out in the big stage on Saturday Yeah and because you started back with Paddy Gilman and then went back over for a bit of pre-season training with Collingwood was it the being so heavily involved again with the Hurland team did that uh, I, I guess inform your your homesickness over there in Australia or was it a, a combination of factors? Yeah, we just had one in North Cork and one in the county and I flew out the day after the county and we um, they were, the boys were getting ready for another uh, for a Munster semi-final and they t- uh, luckily won that. I'm glad they did and we, I, I was able to come home then for Christmas and prepare myself for a Munster final so uh, it all kind of w- worked out in the one uh, e- easy and softly but I was glad you know, I uh, made my decision to stay at home and I was there for another Ireland semi-final and now I'm preparing for another Ireland final come Saturday. What was the point when you were over in Australia for pre-season that you knew you were going to come home? I, I, I didn't know I was going to be coming home. Okay. So, um, yeah, no, I, I went over getting ready for the 2022 season. So, I, um, yeah, I wasn't too sure. Yeah. But what, like, beforehand, was it there a bit of homesickness involved? or? Yeah, there was, there was always homesickness from, from day one, I suppose, since I went out, there was always that grow for coming home playing uh, hurling and football so because you went down initially in 2018 wasn't it I think you both both, yeah, yourself, just... both yourself and Anton Toho were signed pretty much at the same time was Anton much of a help when you went down there was it nice to be around kind of I guess another Irish person and, and get to settle in together and share those uh, growing pains essentially that you have with the new team yeah 100% like there, he was brilliant and there was a lot of other Irish out there as well like McKenna Connor Glass Connor Nash Darryl Zeiss were out there at the same time when I when I first got signed, so uh, they were super as well. And um, there's still a few of them out there, and um, yeah, hopefully they they all go well out there. The majority of them are after coming home now. Yeah, was it a culture shock going out there? Um, I wouldn't say a culture shock. Like I, I fit into the culture pretty easy, uh, pretty nicely as well. Like the boys were on real Australians, yeah. super bunch of lads. Um, it was just more like the the homesickness for holding a football and playing GA was the kind of main one. How did that kind of manifest itself in terms of homesickness? Um, I, I suppose I, I used to get up and watch GA the whole time and it was probably not, not the best for me because I, I used to miss it every single time then. So yeah. um, I, I, I tried my best to get out of my head but um, yeah, just unfortunately I, I couldn't get it out of my head. So um, yeah, so it was kind of the hair telling me where, where I should be as well. So. Did you have like many conversations with the with the coaches down there about that, or were there did they have? Yeah, I guess kind of liaison officers that would help uh, overseas players to to bed in over in Australia or that kind of thing. Yeah, no, I, I said to them that that's when they allowed me to play for Cork in the off season when I came home and my club down the off season as well. So no, they've been super. They've couldn't speak highly of the the way they've handled it and have been able to support me as well. So no, they've been uh, they've been great. Yeah, would I guess people's memories because this already seems like a lifetime ago that 2020 championship when you were essentially allowed to come back and, and play for Cork footballers and then doing what you did against Kerry in that All-Ireland semi-final like like obviously the pandemic is still with us now and there are different bits and ways that we have to kind of get around it that championship in particular and coming home around that time for yourself must have felt like a huge deal yeah no definitely because I, I hadn't played I had just made my senior debut in AFL and I had made my senior debut playing uh, for Inter County Cork Gate, so um, it was something. I, I obviously, young fellas, when you dream, uh, when you're growing up, your dream is to play for Cork. So uh, I was able to fulfil that playing football. And luckily, we beat Kerry in my first game, but unfortunately, we didn't finish it off by beating Tipperary in the Munster final. But for Colin O'Riordan, even to go out and finish it off for himself, him, um, him getting a Munster title in football, I was delighted for him. But um, yeah, also 
devastating for myself and the other Cork footballers. Yeah, because I remember <clears throat> even around the travel restrictions and stuff like that, that we talk of, of certain people and not being able to come home from, from certain countries. Did you encounter any kind of problems in that regard or was it pretty much smooth no. sailing around that time of year? No, I kind of ran smoothly. I, had, uh, I was a resident of Ireland, so it was grand to come back in. had to quarantine, all right, but other than that, yeah, um, yeah it was pretty, pretty much smoothly coming back in home. And the whole thing though, playing in the park with nobody there has got to be odd. Yeah, but there was actually one stage about seven or eight of us flew back to Australia. I think I actually reckon it was after the 2020 season or yeah. was beforehand. But, um, yeah, about eight of us flew back and there was only about three or four other people on the plane other than us. So it was basically a full plane to Australia for us. I, I'd hope you took advantage of that and stretched the legs and all that kind of stuff. As, yeah, as, no, yeah, no, I definitely certainly yeah. did because I've been I've been in plenty of planes going to Australia and they're <laughs> fully packed and there's no room at all. Oh, stop! Like that's that's the dream. Like whatever else about suddenly finding yourself sitting in front of a or sitting in a an emergency exit seat to get on a plane to Australia, knowing you've got twenty yeah. hours of travel ahead of you and there's about five of you on the plane. Oh. That's that's yeah, dream no, true. Exactly. Yeah. Like we could all sit up and take cards together. So I know it was it was ideal. It was. Um, Definitely took advantage of it. Yeah. Is that, like, when you think back to, to that semi-final against Kerry and obviously the final end against Tip, is anything taken away from it from the fact that those games were played in empty stadia or was it just such a big thing for yourself to finally get to pull on a senior jersey for Cork and, and go out there and represent the county on, on that stage? Yeah, I, I just feel like it was, it would have been great if there was a crowd there, but it was just great for me personally just to go out and uh, represent Cork at senior level and it's obviously a dream come true when you're a young young fella um, and also to run out with my club mate Colton O'Mahony as well it was always that was something special for me as well when you're running out playing for in the Munster final with, uh, with your club mate as well it's definitely brings uh, pride and joy to fellas from Mitchellstown yeah it's it's, it's huge um, in terms of this year uh, it seems obviously with, with both club and now Kieran Kingston's mentioned that you're, you're going to throw your oar in with the, with the core corners as well was there ever talk about being a dual player or is there any consideration even on your behalf to being a dual player this year or how close of a call was it between the two um, I actually wasn't even I, I, I didn't make a decision on whether I play hurling or football I just went with the hurling um, didn't really get involved with the football yet this year I suppose my chance I, I always wanted to play both growing up if I could play both now I would play both now um, just in my first year back I just felt like I needed to concentrate on one and I uh, just went with the hurling now this year with uh with Billy Gibbon going so well so we'll see how it goes this year and um yeah it's definitely a, lot, a, lot, a project for the future as well for hurling it's not just going to happen overnight for myself because I still have a bit of work to do but um yeah no I, I've always done to do both uh, I've done both up to under 17 and uh, yeah I'd love to go, give it a try again but it's kind of demanding on the body at the moment but um yeah yeah, at the moment my love is for Cork Hurling at the moment yeah is like how difficult a thing is it to actually balance the two like is the is the notion of a dual player just like a thing of the past at this stage because it was like Cork has been famous for them down through the years uh, especially like but the, the calendar and the way things work out and the demands that are on just being a one code inter-county player are absolutely huge at the minute do you think there's a prospect to, to balance the two in the future for yourself or would it just be a, a case of having to choose between one or the other um, I'm not too sure. It's something, something I'll definitely consider in the next two, three years. I'll, I'll try my best to go both. Um, try to bring it back up to, to, uh, to where it was before that fellas were playing both into county level. Um, because I, I'd absolutely love to play hurling and football for Cork. Um, in the next few years, so um, it's definitely something I'll probably strive towards over the next few years once I uh, get my feet set down. Yeah, things seem to be like between underage, both in football and hurling, um. They, they, the signs are promising for both codes down in Cork at the minute going forward for the next five, six, seven years. Like the medium term in terms of Cork's future looks pretty promising. Yeah, no, definitely. Like you've seen the hurlers win the minor and under 20 and same with the footballers uh, win under 20 minors as well. So um, now they're going really well underage and just hopefully they can uh, fall into place at the senior level and uh, bring that, uh, I suppose, w- w- winning management uh, into the senior level. Yeah, and, and, and give and give us senior boys um, a confidence to grow off that. And it, like the 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 increase in competition from having that influx of players coming in from under twenty, etc., is, is got to be huge in terms of bringing the standards of everybody up across the board. Definitely, and it's, it's nice to have, nice to have a change as well, bringing in fellas that are young. 
it's a um, to have a hybrid of players, young old, and in the middle. So it's uh, you're always keeping on your toes. Um, so there's, there's a big uh, fight for, for positions. What did you make of the edge here and stuff this week, Mark? Uh, I didn't actually read into too much, to be honest. Uh, I'm not even too sure what the whole thing is about, really. So, uh, yeah, my focus just this weekend is about uh, Billy Gibbon in, in the Northern Ireland final. That's abs- like, listen, that's absolutely fair. You've got one major thing to, to focus on and, and to put all your efforts uh, mentally and physically into the weekend. And we wish you the very best of luck, Mark, and continued uh, best yeah. of luck as well uh, throughout the rest of the season. When, fingers crossed, from your point of view, that you join up uh, with the core curlers and best of luck to everyone down in Billy Gibbon. Yeah, perfect. Thanks a million. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. There you go. Mark Keane, Club Championship coverage on Off the Ball, brought to you by AIB, proud sponsors of the Football Hurling and Camogie All Ireland Club Championships. Check out hashtag the toughest for more.